It's more about talking now about some kind of like content aggregation than more about like a television in its sense before when it was uh, linear and people were like in a vast majority they were waiting for you know what is going to be offered to them at that night or at that weekend you know now it's more uh, much more uh, fragmented everybody is looking for its own content uh, uh, on the internet some people still on linear television uh, some people on uh, platforms dedicated for something like netflix uh, you know they're dedicated specialized already in something in in in, uh, in kind of programming which is close to television just a different way of uh, watching it uh, and uh, as you just mentioned uh, some people uh, already go for things like uh, youtube and we, we should probably consider tiktok also to be part of this you know i'm definitely not the one who is watching it but my 10 years old son yes and they have definitely different perception of the of the content, of the communication of the content. Of uh, uh, it's much faster, much simplified. It's not always uh, good for them to for the perception of reality, emotions, whatever topics, concepts. But uh, it's like that basically. So we have to live with it, and uh, uh, we have to find a way to to catch the attention of of the new generation of, of people. It's probably also different on the lifestyle. You know, it's, it's different kind of content people are watching in, in the cities, different content in the, in the outside of the cities, in the villages, in the, out in the countryside. Um, but I, I can see it in Czech Republic, for example, where they, we, we still have a big different uh, lifestyle uh, between countryside and, uh, and big... Uh, actually, we have one big city, it's Prague, and then we have a couple of towns which are close to be uh, like a city life, let's say. Uh, but uh, we see a very big difference in the content, in the consumer tastes in, for television, for example. And indeed, when you are working for linear television as a producer, you have to take in consideration, uh, you, try to, you try to catch the, 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 the taste of, uh, of all these people, all of these viewers. And uh, it's, it's not easy. That's why also the TV stations now, they tend to have more channels and they separate much more the target groups, of course. And, uh, but this is the reality, I would say. <laughs> it was the same, I think. It was the same. Probably there was a global strategy. Um, uh, as, as to say, like a, a consumer with a 10 years old son, uh, quite busy, uh, less and less able to really to go to the cinema. It's somehow nice that I can get also some interesting content directly to Netflix, <laughs> uh, which is sometimes actually harder and harder because over the last years, I think uh, all of us, like the people who are like, uh, we laugh filmmaking and uh, television and uh, this kind of storytelling we have watched all the shows all the best shows on netflix and uh, it's not so easy to 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 keep the attention of of that kind of people it's very hard because uh, i mean of course what is uh, full of topics full of full of events which we can uh, talk about uh, make a movie so serious about it but uh, uh, I, I think it's not only my personal thing. It's not easy to catch, catch the attention, and and still bring bring us back. And many times, I don't know, it's probably happening to you as well. You know, you you start watching some series, and then you watch one season, and then you never go to the second one. Actually, what happened to me recently? I was talking to some other producer, or I think it was a producer, and uh, we were talking about some series, and uh, I. I didn't know what he was talking about. I said, oh, sounds good. Maybe I should see it. And then we went deeper and I said, oh, it's this one. I've seen the first season a year ago. And I totally forgot about, I forgot about it. And it was actually a very good series, very good, uh, like a quality. And it was not something like, you know, you watch and you just forget it because it's like a popcorn thing or like, uh, and, uh, but it's uh, this, this, uh, this, 
amount of information we are getting uh, or amount of offer is so huge. So I understand that they have to find the content which will be different than uh, than than uh, what uh, I mean, which will make them unique, uh, uh, like Netflix or other kind of uh, streamer or even the uh, Czech uh, televisions, uh, uh, um, linear television uh, televisions uh, broadcasters. I mean, uh, they they tend. Uh, to 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 have some kind of exclusivity on some kind of programming because they want it's like a branded content no it's like what what netflix is doing so uh i think i mean for cinema more and more we need like big events something which is really really big in terms of combination of the topic covered and also the great production which is really an event to go to the cinema so it's it's harder and harder to do something um, for cinema. At the same time, cinema was always uh, for, at least in, in our countries, in, in, in Czech Republic, definitely, but I think it's quite the general uh, trend that the cinema was always, mm, the, you know, the center of the, the, the target group was like 25 years and people around it, because that's the typical cinema goer. He is going often because, you know, young people, they, want to spend the time together so they go to the cinema you know when you are 30 35 plus 40 plus you have to be with your family you have other things to do so then we have a great offer on the on the streamers and uh, which we didn't have before it was not so easy so it's probably easier to catch now some things than before but, uh, I don't know if it's I'm so conservative but uh, the, to be to be to be honest I find less and less interesting movies in the cinemas and even in the streamers, you know, it's like, uh, so uh, maybe it's the age, we have seen too much. <laughs> I, I agree. I think, uh, uh, I don't want to say it's not good for the market, but I think uh, it, it will get to some, kind of, uh, some point of consolidation. I, because just yesterday, uh, being on the on the on the meeting gathering of Apit, uh, you know, we are sitting there and uh, all the producers and uh, talking about great opportunities, and uh, it seems like we are growing. The sky is the limit, you know. We are never gonna stop grow stop growing. The industry will be all the time more and more and more uh, content demand. And then at the same time, uh, the reality, as I it is as I described, I think it's uh, just the consumers are less sensitive for it, but it's like that you have a lot of content and you are not always really uh, it's it's not the content that you must see or it would have to exist uh, and but of course some are somehow there are always some uh, some great things which are uh, coming up and i guess that the amount of content which is being produced probably helps uh, grow the quality because you have a lot of people who can really shoot a lot and improve because you are, as a filmmaker, you are, by shooting, you are learning, by, by doing things, you are just getting better, you get experience. It's always like about continuity, about the long term. So, so then uh, once, once uh, there are some projects, uh, uh, I mean, I can say, for example, just comes to my mind, Chermo Chernobyl on HBO or, or even on HBO, I liked uh, the Patria. The, the Spanish uh, series for me, like, you know, very strong concepts, very strong projects with something to say, some strong topic. Yeah. Of course, there are even lighter uh, genres which are worth, but there is a lot of things which just, you know, just flow <laughs> and they will disappear. And, uh, but, uh, but economically speaking, like uh, from the producer's point of view, uh, uh, is this really sustainable in this amount and this unlimited growth? I mean, Czech Republic is going to now enter. We have Netflix like five years, something like that. We have Amazon, but Amazon is not so active so far. It's more like uh, linked to, I think, a German account uh, of the because we don't even have a Amazon uh, in Czech Republic for delivery services. We, 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 they are they're serving Czech Republic from Germany. And uh, uh, now is we you, we used to have or we still have uh, HBO like uh, it's, it has been there like 15 years and they they did a big uh, reform changing uh, um, going onto platform and um, 
Uh, now it's actually in June, it's supposed to open uh, Disney Plus. I think Universal is about to come to Europe and some other platforms. Uh, is this really sustainable? Uh, probably it will be not, uh, the people will not be willing to pay 10 times the fee. So they are not even willing to pay for public TV anymore, <laughs> which is somehow a pity. But the atmosphere in the society is like that. And uh, so I think there will be some kind of a development in the, in the years. I, I, don't, I don't think it's possible to just to grow and grow and grow. Uh, I mean, many people are talking about some European VOD platform or something like that. So basically, we have the, the problem which we have, which used to have always in the cinema. That's why the cinema in Europe tend to be subsidized somehow and or still tends to be. Uh, we have uh, basically, we will never have a one territory. You know, there is this uh, wonderful idea of digi digital single market, but uh, uh, it can be uh, somehow working, but not really like we cannot uh, 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 ignore territoriality. This is a key thing for the businesses. I mean, European Union is not United States. It's a different countries with different tastes, different people, different cultures, different languages, and it has to be accepted. So it would be a big problem for the European problem and for the European platform. But I think it's if one, if a, such a platform will emerge uh, in some of the bigger countries, France, Germany, I don't know, and manages to grow, uh, really and go across uh, the the uh, the borders why not but it's uh, it's very hard to to do something uh, uh, like uh, you know uh, which would not be a natural thing i mean there is a there is a, a natural success of platforms like netflix because they just uh, started in a huge territory then they prove their existence and they, they go further, they go to another countries. So I think if, if any, any, any European businessman will have an idea, okay, I wanna have my platform, he might even still consider to go to start in the United States. You know, so it's like, uh, uh, it's not so easy uh, to, to, to start uh, something like that. And uh, at the same time, uh, uh, I see uh, working with CEPI and uh, uh, talking to politicians and to European con Commission, uh, unfortunately, there is this is not very easy uh, to explain the the complexity of the film industry and television industry or audiovisual industry to to our politicians, and uh, unfortunately, they like to be, uh, uh, you know, they, they they if they are approached by Netflix or of these uh, successful su successful big players, they feel pleased. And they, they like to listen to them and they like to listen to the uh, idea of uh, free market and uh, these things. Uh, fine, free market is free market, but uh, this market is oligopolic market. This is oligopoly market. Um, it, was, it used to be always in television. It, it is now with platforms and producers, content producers need some kind of, we need some kind of understanding on the, for the well of the whole industry we need that our politicians uh, understand uh, that we need to make some kind of I, I you know it sounds bad the regulation word but uh, uh, some kind of hints uh, or let's say regulations which are supporting local and national uh, and European uh, producers uh, to be strong enough uh, to be able to to finance the con industry, to finance their companies, uh, because as I said already before, and it's a long-term process to to be successful author, successful producer, successful co uh, film company. You need continuity, and uh, if we don't uh, support continuity, uh, then then uh, we will not have the the strong industry, and we will lose the competitivity. Uh, on the international market and in the end of the day we will just end up uh, like that uh, the big players will hire our authors they will give them the work once or maybe a few times more but uh, all the added value will stay with them it will not stay in Europe it will not stay with the European uh, producers 
because they will make the real money, they will make it uh, on our people, on European creative people, European producers or creative producers, European authors, but they will keep it for them. So uh, we need some kind of reasonable uh, regulation on that, which is actually already being done somehow in AVMSD, the audiovisual directive, but unfortunately there is so many interests uh, in different countries we see it uh, from the SEPI point of view. It's very hard to to make uh, the the incentive really uh, clear in order to to push uh, uh, individual states, individual countries in Europe, to follow some kind of a similar principles. Uh, we see uh, we are facing a lot of like local or, 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 or lobbying on the national level from the platforms, uh, but also from the local broadcasters and uh, they are protecting themselves a lot, uh, which in the end of the day doesn't really help uh, to the industry itself on the long term or mid term. Uh, and uh, politicians are not strong enough, let's say, you know, um, because who can say that? But from the beginning, this is on the Brussels level. So, and there is a good intention but uh, the uh, enforcement of these good intentions in the national in the nation in the countries in the individual countries almost doesn't exist so we have this experience as an association producers in Czech Republic we 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 many times communicated with brussels you know, there is a lot of a lot of barriers to get to the ideal ideal world but it's like that we are fighting <laughs> Uh, that's 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 exactly what I'm saying because it's not about producing now and getting some uh, like uh, uh, wage or getting paid of, of producing. That's a work for hire, and that's now and that's uh, uh, okay if the industry has some work uh, now. But uh, we ha that's where I'm talking about uh, regulation because it's not easy. It's basically not possible without some kind of legal support uh, to uh, have balanced uh, negotiation, negotiating uh, positions between producers, even big companies in Europe, and huge global players. And it used to be like that even in the past, uh, in the television world, on the national level, uh, the countries, uh, even I, I always say the Britain, which is like one of the most capitalist, let's say, in Europe countries, they have very strong regulations on uh, protection of producers, and it, it has brought them economical uh, success. Success, when they said uh, at, at, in Broadcasting Act, when they when they when they declared uh, uh, something like 15 years ago, uh, uh, it's not that it's not possible that the, uh, the, the BBC and the, uh, um, would take. Uh, uh, co-production uh, parts or, or stake on the, all the rights of the uh, um, products made by producers, they only can have a limited license, suddenly it made a huge investment from the side of the producer, it made uh, even uh, more of the, let's say, uh, not financial investment, it means like motivation, intellectual investment in the productions, and uh, their export has uh, done uh, uh, the, the, uh, has changed from 10 million uh, pounds per, uh, per year into 1.5 billion pounds per year. So this, we call, it looks like a regulation, it sounds like socio socialistic or whatever, it's not like that, it's just protecting our industry uh, in our benefits and to, to keep exactly, to protect, to find a way to protect uh, intellectual property, to protect long-term value of what we do, what we create, in order to be monetize it uh, uh, properly, because it's not about getting a small bread and butter uh, for 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 doing something tomorrow uh, today, but it's about uh, creating value, which is then being expl explored over the years and globally. I sometimes I try to explain it also to to our politicians in, in Czech Republic when we, when we talk about uh, uh, the role of the producer, why we need this kind of uh, rights. You know, I say, look at the developer who is building houses. Yes. You know, they are not selling houses for uh, cost of construction. They would not survive. 
it doesn't make any sense. If they invest in the whole thing and they've put the idea how the house will look like, if they, 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 they put all the effort to do it, and to, to be successful, they create a value which is the house in the market value, not the value of the bricks and the, the, the work who has done the house. And, uh, uh, and th this is a big difference. But we as a producer are asked many times by these global platforms or by the even the national broadcasters many times, uh, by these uh, uh, that uh, they, you get your you get your fee like uh, like the like the construction company, but but we are not the construction company. We are developer in that case. So we have to get this added value, which is you know reflected in the fact that we have invested in the whole thing. We took a risk to create the product. So there is a and this is not easy without some kind of a support, even in bigger countries even for big companies. But what is proven that the countries which has done that kind of revolu uh, regulation, France, Britain, for example, but a lot of regulations exist even in Germany and different countries, uh, they are more successful in the audiovisual, business, uh, in the audiovisual industry and they are exporting more. Uh, it is not an industry which can easily be solved by, uh, by the market itself. And that I don't want to be kind of like, uh, I, I'm not like pro socialistic solutions. It's really economic protection of our interest. <laughs>